What's going on, people? We're going to do this a little differently today. Yesterday, I tried to do a live event. Now, I I'm going to keep trying because actually I ordered something else that may help with the next live event. But we had gremlins in the machine and things shut down. So essentially, the presentation was done. And it was done in podcast form with no slides and everyone loves slides. So I decided to redo it today and I thought about it. I was going to do this eight o'clock tonight. And I was like, you know what? It's Monday. The kids are back in school. I'm going to do it now so people can watch it whenever they want to watch it. And with that, let's let's just make it happen. Few things about me, the truth about Glendon Cameron, former storage auction buyer, serial entrepreneur, publisher, author, and school founder. Who the thunk that was going to happen? Not me. Wasn't really looking to do that. It was just a natural matriculation of events and destiny. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. And I do believe that you create your own destiny. No college, no fancy pedigree, just driving willpower. I didn't have any special connections. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, nor a platinum spoon or any spoon at all. I just figured out some things along the way, and I want to impart that knowledge to you. Essentially, I was where some of you are. Because most of you didn't have it that bad. And then again, I don't know. I'm assuming I'm being a presumptuous, but I am someone that came from very meager circumstances and did well. I can teach you how to do that. It because this, you know, I'll give you a quick analogy. I'm in the gym quite a bit. And there are people who will walk around with bulls on their lower legs. Like if you work your legs, you know, bulls or calves. And there are, there's guys who have natural calf tissue, big calves, just woke up and there they were. That is the last person that I would look to for a calf routine. I actually saw someone who had really good calf development. And I saw how they were working their calves. And I went over and dude showed me a picture of, of the, of the little twigs he used to have. And I was like, okay, you, I'm listening to. Because he 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 started off where I was. And following his uh, routine, my calves are like close to 18 inches. And, you know, definition and stuff. And, you know, some I've even gotten whistled at when I'm walking around shorts. And the girl's like, you got those curvy legs. It just, and, you know, it's, they don't look that big to me because I've been living with them my whole life. But they are way bigger than they used to be. Because I got the right information. And that's what this is going to be about for you. I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff. So just essentially, I didn't have any special knowledge, no hookup. Everything that I know how to do now is something that I learned through trial and error, reading books, taking courses, actually doing something, being out there, making it happen. You could do the same thing. You can. You can do the same thing. Now, the part that no one likes is it's going to take you time. It's going to take effort. Sometimes it's going to take blood, sweat, and tears. And, you know, uh, people don't want to hear that. They just are looking for some magic jelly beans. I don't have any magic jelly beans, but I have some damn tasty pizza. I got it by the slice. And it's good. It's chock full of calories, protein, <laughs> and meat. <laughs> well, essentially, I can help you go from having nothing, which is the bottom, to having something, which is where you want to be. Notice I didn't say the top. Everyone doesn't want to go to the top. For most people, if they could do these two things, have a house that's paid off before they're 40, the car they want paid off and about 50 G's in the bank money well on situated for retirement and no personal debt. People who are living like that are considered rich now. They're considered rich because they don't have a lot of issues or uh, other things that are going on that stresses them out. 
So with, you know, what I'm about to break down to you, because the world's about to change. It's a lot of stuff that's going on because essentially you've got to take that first step from transitioning to an employee to a business owner. You can start a business. You can. And this is the thing that creates a problem because when you use the word business, people think of a huge skyscraper and pretty secretaries and car service. And that's part of business for some companies. That's their business life. But for everyone else, your business is you. Now, this is something that you really, really don't want to um, deal with. The most powerful thing that you can do for your business is actually believe that you can start a business. You have to tell yourself with energy and enthusiasm that you can start a business. There are many people who are held up by prisons of their own mind that I can't start a business because I'm not special enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I don't have the right connections and I don't know the people. And I I can't I have bad credit, so I can't go to the bank and get a business loan. On that note, Conundrum Publishing was started with $289 without a capital reinvestment for about damn near 20 months. So if you're thinking you need a whole lot of money to start a business, you are wrong. You need hustle. You need drive. Truth be told, too much money could actually cripple you because it will hide your blind spots and deficiencies. We got money. We can do this. We can do this. Uh, Typically, I tell anyone that's making money and they want to do something like novel or different and you've got the budget, cut your budget in half. Don't double your budget. Cut your budget in half. And move some of that money into another account and operate on that half and see what you can get done. Because it will force you to be creative. It'll force you to look at the world from a different vantage point. It will force you to get up, get out, and get something, as those wonderful rap poets said back in the day, named Outcast. And once you start to believe, you activate opportunity. Once you start to believe mental doors, because see, this is the thing. All opportunity in the world is right before you right now. There's no special opportunity that's just going to pop up on your door and go, let me in. It's already there. You can't see it because you don't believe. You don't believe. You don't think you can do it. Now, the world's changed, right? It's changed quite a bit. But see, you must believe that the world has changed. And you must believe that you can start a business. And part of starting your business, you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to say the M word, mistakes. You're going to make them. You're going to make a lot of them. Now, this is the thing that no one tells you. If you make a ton of mistakes really fast, you increase your knowledge base really fast. And then you can make better decisions with that information that you gathered to move your business forward. That's what you can do. Now, this is something else. It's going to take you time. If you are a yard bird right now and you, for some reason, want to be an eagle and you know you've checked, you went to the DNA test, and you're like, I have ego DNA. If I push myself, I've got the organic material. If I push myself, I can make that happen. But they got to work, and it's going to take time. You're going to have to put it, pay your dues. It's going to take time, but you can do it. And that, I believe, is the biggest barrier to people starting business, is getting over that. It's going to take time. And how much time? I don't know. You could start your business in a month. It could take 10 years. I don't know what you want to do with the attributes, talent, and abilities that you have. I don't know. But I do know this, that if you start working your ass off, you have purpose, you have a goal, strategy, amazing things can happen. 
the world has changed. Many people don't believe that. There's a saying, the more things have changed, the more they remain the same. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. If you are a student of history and you read a lot, you will know that the world has experienced massive change. For some people, this is good. For some people, this is a problem. Now, I want you to check out this book because you've all heard of me in my degree myth video I've put out a few years ago. These guys actually study what is happening with jobs. They wrote a book on it. This book was from 2011. Many things they talked about have happened and many things they talked about will continue to happen because we are at this apex of innovation and access. If you will hold up your iPhone, Android, whatever you have, that phone that you have that you bought within the last two years has more processing power than your first computer if you were like me and bought it in the 1997. This phone can do way more than that computer that you spent thousands of dollars for in the 90s. Your phone can do movies. Your first computer couldn't make movies. Your, your, your phone, I mean, your phone surfed the internet faster. The chip in your phone is better than the chips that were in your old computer. And I, I use this to compare and contrast how fast we're moving. Because this phone you have today, here it is, 2014. In five years, what this thing is going to be able to do is blow your mind. You will have people literally starting companies and running businesses from their phone. Some people do that now. If you are someone that embraces technology, this is awesome. This is great. Every morning you wake up and you're doing the happy dance or the smurf or the prep or whatever move that you do when you get happy because these are great times. But if you are a person that doesn't like to read, doesn't like to study, doesn't embrace technology and just hoping and wishing for the status quo to stay the same, you are screwed something else that's going on i like uh notice the date that's august 1st 2014 not too long ago we have a new problem this whole recession recovery thing is being exposed unemployment is creeping back up you want to know why there's no big economic drivers such as housing or some some is there's nothing that's going to lift a bunch of boats you know, there's no big tide. However, there's a bunch of water sprouts. There's a bunch of private lakes. You know, you can build your own cove and get some stuff going. But essentially, unemployment is going up. And if true unemployment was factor, I would say it's roughly 20% across the board. Because you're like, well, you know, college graduates have less unemployment than high school graduates. Yeah, they do. I own Starbucks, so I can get me an English lit major for the same money that I used to have to pay the kid that just graduated high school? No brainer. Come on in, Miss Humanities degree. Welcome. And here's your apron, and here's your time card. I don't even have to deal with those high school students anymore, and you're so much more interesting to talk to. And I get you for the same money I would have to pay Opie from high school. And that is why the employment rate of college graduates is lower than I mean it's higher than regular folks because they're hiring them for all kinds of jobs including the shit jobs that they years ago would have laughed at taking what do you mean you want me to serve this laffe latte grande what whatever I know Shakespeare Hamlet's my friend doesn't really matter doesn't because uh, as Aaron Clary says, you know, if you're getting a worthless degree, as I said in the degree myth video, if you're getting a degree that cannot give you the skill sets and the ability to pay back your student loans, you are not only boo boo the fool, you're boo boo the fool's grandfather and grandmother. And you're going to hatch some more boo boo the fools because you can't do simple third grade math. It's not going to work. Once again, this is a segue. 
College used to work. Certain career fields still work, but they're hard. You will not be able to be like that last there turning it up. Well, I guess at graduation, you could turn it up since you should be done with studying if you're graduating. But many of these schools that put out the proper information that will enable you to earn a significant living, it is hard. When I was in the military, I was a laboratory specialist, 92 Bravo. A, uh, it was BML and AML. Okay. It was the medical laboratory specialist course crammed in, you know, something that normally took two years. It was crammed in like six months. We had tests that were called crucials. You know why they were called crucials? Because if you didn't pass them, you went down the hill and became a 91 alpha because they recycled you into another MOS. My class started off with about 110, 115 people. 60 of us graduated. 60. Every week. The first few weeks weren't so bad. But every week, it was just like you start seeing one of your peeps going down the hill. TA50, camo. We were in, wearing ice cream whites. Nobody looked at us. We went to class, did our duties, and we were off. It was like we were in college. Except... If you didn't pass, <laughs> there was some serious consequences that were rapid. They were rapid. So typically you want to get into something that's going to stress you out and it's going to really, really be something vigorous because if it's vigorous and it's challenging, there's a need for it typically. Now, this is something else that's going to become the norm. And this is a happy posting. I quit my job to become a freelance writer. Check it out when you get time. Essentially, this person, but they didn't just jump. They didn't just go, Geronimo! That's what we used to say when I was a kid, and we'd jump off cliffs and stuff. Now that would probably get you called a racist or something. But this person, before they yelled, Geronimo! They actually worked on putting their work out there, building their portfolio in advance of quitting their job. You know, like I talked about earlier, this thing will take time. This will take time. So all of this stuff is going on because jobs are disappearing. You know, what used to work doesn't work. And you have to prepare to quit your job. You have to prepare to be fired. Prepare today. Start looking at something. I don't care if you get a side hustle that only makes 50 bucks a month. What you learn from Handling the paperwork, the office work will set you apart and put you in a very good spot for your future. Because essentially, it's coming. Something very big, something very powerful is coming. It's a cultural shift. Essentially, by my estimations, and I'm just throwing numbers out there. By 2020, which is not that far away since this is 2014, a 40 to 50% of certain job, you know, certain people, they're going to be freelancers. And they're like, wait a minute, I can't work for myself. I don't know how to do nothing like that, Glendon. Well, years ago, when the Pilgrims came out, came to America, they, um, they essentially were self-employed. They came here and they had to make their own clothes, their own shoes, booze. They had to make everything. Everything. And with that comes a certain level of independence. A certain level of ruggedness, a certain level of autonomy. So essentially, you could prepare to quit your job or be unprepared and be flat footed like I was way back when, when I got laid off for the third time. It could be like that. And all of a sudden you have to scramble and summon the forces of the universe to come to your aid. I it's lit a, it lit it lit a fire under my ass. I didn't have any money in the bank. I didn't have no job. I was living in a boarding house. 
I had reached a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Something has to change. And the only thing that I can change in this equation is me. And I changed me. And in six weeks, I was living in a house, not a boarding room. I was living in a freaking house with levels. It was really, really charming. I was working a job that people didn't yell at you and talk shit to you. Well, actually, I did get yelled at and talk shit, but they paid me for it. It's a difference when you're making six bucks an hour and someone's talking to you like that. It's a big difference. But you have to prepare to be fired. You have to prepare for these things that are going to come because they're coming. Whether you want them to come or not, they're coming. I don't care what your mama told you. You know, unless you're like independently wealthy, okay, then you could just disregard this and go ahead and get on your yacht and smoke a doobie. And, you know, off in the off on the ocean in international waters where apparently not a lot of jurisdictions exist. You could do that. But if you're like I used to be, still in the matrix, you have to prepare today don't wait until tomorrow don't wait until well you know it's new year's i need to do my rep no don't wait no start now start now start building start working because see this is a question where are you gonna fit in you see that dude on that horse you see where his foot is he's his foot's on that lady it's a lady because she has boobs that's breast she, he is stepping on her head. And his horse, his hoof, is about to hit this other dude in the nuts. This is what's going to be happening. Uh, those poor, unfortunate people in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, for uh, this young man that was literally executed in the middle of the street and the things are going on. We're going to have protests like that in the very near future, but they will not be because of some rogue cop committing murder. They will be because you can't get a loaf of bread without, you know, taking out a loan. Because if you haven't noticed, the things that you don't need, such as televisions, your phone, all this stuff, the prices just come down. Remember, just think, what did you pay for your flat screen television five, six years ago? It was a grip. Now you get a better television that already has the internet and everything on it. You don't have to go out and buy like a separate adapter for a third of what you paid or, or a fourth sometimes. And it's a better television. The stuff that you don't need, based on, once again on automation and inefficiencies in the manufacturing, the price is coming down. But the things you need, fuel, food, health care, going up, going up. Are you? Are we going to the fifth floor? No, we're going to the fifty-fifth floor. That's what's going to happen, and this is what's this is what you're going to see. This is already the job market. This is how people are jockeying for positions because it's very hard out there. It's very rough. It's 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 just insane what people are going through, and if you want to not be in this fracas then you got to make some you know decisions because you can be this guy or you can be this guy all right we're moving too fast all right here we go you can be this guy or this guy you want to be this guy or this guy this guy or this guy because if you start a small business and let's just let's just like I said, keep it simple. Let's not even talk millions. Let's talk one hundred and fifty thousand dollars gross revenue. So you got this business, you're running it well, you're, you're keeping cost containment controls on and you have an employee pay him twenty, thirty thousand dollars. To free you up to do other stuff. So if we had more people doing that. It will seriously solve a lot of these problems because big corporations are not going to lead the way out of this. It's not happening because they're getting the best technology. They're getting the best intel and they're going to be able to do far more with far less, i.e. less being organic, you know, carbon based life forms, human beings. It used to be if a company was doing a billion, they had at least 5000 employees, at least. 
Um, I think GE at one point had a few hundred thousand. I'm not sure about that, but um, and they were like you know one of the big you know multi billion dollar companies, and I think they had two hundred thousand employees were well. So you're going to have companies that are going to do that, and they may have a thousand employees now. And as time goes on, you're going to have companies making like 30, 40, 50 billion. They have 500 employees. It's happening. You're going to have major corporations with very, very low human footprints. It's going to be very low. That's the power of technology. That's the power of automation. That's the power of outsourcing. So if you are here, you are just road killed rob that's what you are you're road kill rob because jobs are going the way of the dinosaurs so you know you do this and let's and let's just say it i talked about it in the last video say you have a certain skill that's in demand and what you do is you incorporate yourself and you hire some people to do the dirty work and you become management. So you put you duplicate yourself five or six times, make four times as much money and work less, not as much. You got a choice. You can be the pimp or you can be the hoe. You can be the pimp. You can be the hoe. Some people like being pimps. Some people like being hoes. Um, hold on. I need to put my furry cap on. Which brings us to hunt or be hunted. The way this thing is going, as I said, you can be the pimp, you can be the hoe. That's it. That's, that's it. You kill what you eat. Now, let's talk briefly about what is a business. Okay. You see that desk? That's Conundrum Publishing. That's it. Notice some things missing. There are no business cards, um, there's no phones. There's no secretary. That's conundrum publishing right there. That computer and that desk. That's it. That's the whole deal. This is the future. Many of you can do this very thing that I did. You could do it. Because you have to change your mind of what a business is. Because it's like, oh, you got to incorporate. Because if you ain't incorporated, you're not a business, you know. Hey, we ain't running on them bullshit business. We're going to incorporate. We're going to have some business cards. We 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 going to be about that business, you know. We're going to look professional. Fuck it if we ain't making any money. We'll get to that later. But right now, we flossing. <laughs> I've seen that when I was in the office furniture business. I saw companies spend massive amounts of money on office furniture and mere months later, that furniture was up for sale or that space was empty. They spent more time focused on looking like a business than actually becoming a business. I didn't incorporate because, you know, essentially my whole thing was conundrum media. I was just writing books, you know, and I was doing a few workshops and stuff. I didn't incorporate. I know how to incorporate. I even know all, all corporate structures. I didn't do it because it wasn't really necessary for what I was doing. Now that there's Hustle University, there's going to be workshops, I hired somebody. Now, now, once again, this, this, this whole thing's five years old. So all this stuff that people tell you about, oh, you got a corporate, you got to do this. Uh, the internal revenue service says, oh, you know, you only have three years to strike a loss. Amazon was in business for eight years with losses. Oops. Forget all that noise that you heard about starting a business. I'm going to give you in Hustle University and other things how to get to a point of making money if you listen to me and you use the advice. The advice can be wonderful. The advice can look like the best thing you ever saw, but if you don't embrace it, it's not going to work for you. Now, before I part, this is the most important thing here. I have met so many people who want to make five thousand, ten thousand a month, twenty thousand a month, a million dollars a month, and they have not earned their first fucking dollar online. <laughs> you can't earn your ten thousand dollars before you earn your first dollar. I know you've seen it. There's these people on television and they're just these kids and they create this business. And all of a sudden, here comes Daddy Warbucks in and gives them a $100,000 contract. And they were making no money before that. 
Trust me, something else is going on, if you know what I mean. Seriously, it's going to be much easier for you to ramp up your expectations if they are wrapped in reality. It's much easier to make your second dollar after your first dollar. It's much easier to make $200 a month after you made $100 a month. It's much easier to make $5,000 a month if you just made $4,500 the month before. If you ramp it up that way and really work very, 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 very hard on earning your first dollar, because it's the most important thing in business. If you go back to the land of the dinosaurs when, you know, cable boxes were big and ugly and had wood panel grain texture and they were sitting on top of televisions, you could walk into virtually any business and up there on the wall, you would see a dollar bill or something larger, a five dollar bill, something framed. And that was that first dollar that that business made. It was so important because until you make your first dollar, you're not in business. I don't care if you have a fancy suit. I don't care if your business cards are just like, oh, God, they're to die for. They're so interesting. And is that a hologram? You don't mean shit until you make your first dollar. I don't care if you have a building that you're leasing. You're spending a lot of money, but you're not making any money. You are better off staying in your house, working out of your house until you have cash flow to ramp up and move your business forward. Earning that first dollar, that second dollar, that third dollar is so important. <clears throat> it lets you know you can do it. It um, takes you to a higher level of ability. It opens your horizons. It takes you so far. And like I said, I I've talked to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people recently that want to make money online. They want to do affiliate marketing or they want to do, uh, you know, niche websites, which and there are people making plenty of money doing that stuff. But if you have not made your first dollar, my suggestion to you is to find something and make a few bucks, get your feet wet and then escalate. Because many people are trying to take off at 30,000 square feet and they have not taken and they have not achieved liftoff. They're just trying to like, hey, you know, I have that CEO mindset, but I got that uh, janitor work ethic and paycheck to boot. Because essentially until you earn your first dollar, start making some money. Um, that's one of the reasons that 30 days to 2,500 bucks was successful. Now, with this, I'm going to say this, and if you know, I've been saying this for months, and I'm going to say it again. One of the reasons that I am moving away from recommending eBay and Amazon is people become addicted. They start getting on that Amazon titty or that eBay titty, and they can't get off. And it's just like when you're just like, come, come with me, and they're like, no. And then, you know, they're scratching you in the eye and hitting you upside the head with a pan because you're trying to take them off of that eBay titty, even though the milk is sour or there isn't as much milk coming out the titty as it used to be. They don't want to let it go because one day they went to a garage sale and they bought some for a dollar and they put it on eBay and it sold for six hundred dollars. And then that set the expectations of what they thought was going to happen the rest of their career. They're chasing that high. Right now, it is easier to build your own thing than it's ever been before. There are so many things that are available out there to you that did not exist two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. That are just amazing and awesome and will help you build a business. Now, one of the things that we're going to do in Hustling University is hold people accountable because... I look at places that I was held accountable and I was uncomfortable. There was times I wanted to quit. It would be the military, be basic training. It would be a BML and it'd be freaking rent -a crate Those three places I grew the most. So if you want to grow and actually start to make money and start to change your life, you're going to have to be uncomfortable. As long as you're trying to like, well, you know, I don't want to work too hard. I go to work for my eight hours and, you know, 
hey, Glenda, you got a program I can do for like 30 minutes a day and, uh, you know, make 5000 in about 90 days. You got something like that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, could you keep it under like 25 bucks? you know, because uh, I got to pay mortgage. When you have such unrealistic expectations, <laughs> it is no wonder that you're frustrated because it doesn't make sense to really amp up what you're doing to make a business out of nothing other than your creativity. And it's, it's, it's possible. I was uh, talking to my banker who's from Ethiopia. And we had this conversation because she's got a sister who might need my services. I don't know. We'll find out. And she was just saying that, you know, because she was working somewhere. Then she went back to Ethiopia. And she came back here and she was telling me a lot of things that are happening in Africa. And she said, with immigrants, we come here and we know it's going to be hard. She said, you who are born here, you kind of feel in this is someone from the outside looking in. Well, actually, she's American now. She's like, you like, you just expect good things to happen because you you were born. And I just like, oh, man, this is so cool because I've said the same thing. And you have to let that go. The opportunity's here, but you're going to have to work for it. And the thing is, you don't have to work for it as long as you had used to in the beginning. I mean, literally, you can build a very strong business model in a year that will support you and your family. It's very, very possible. But you will have to be very realistic. You'll have to look at the world through lenses that are clear and unfiltered. So this is your task. This is your mission if you choose to accept it. I want you, after listening to this video, I don't even wait until the morning, figure out something that you can do and make some money online. Make make as much as you can. Make you know, set a goal. Make make a hundred bucks by before in the morning. Figure out some way that you can make some money online. Go for it. You might surprise yourself. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.